Hi, my name is Sumit Mogi, and I'm really passionate about uh, the Petra Kucha format of presentations. And I'm extremely sorry that I can't actually deliver this presentation in front of you. But here's a short Petra Kucha about Petra Kuchas that I'll use to introduce the format to you. Right, so before I start talking about the format, I need to tell you that there is this thing called dude's law, which basically means that you understand the value of a practice when you emphasize the why over the how. So why do we actually do Petra Kuchas? Isn't it a very constrained format? I think the constraints are really good because constraints drive creativity. Now, if you think of the 20 second limit on your slides, that ensures that you make your slides pretty crisp and you don't say too much. If you look at the six minute and 40 second time limit, it means that you're gonna deliver a crisp message and if it's boring, people don't have to suffer you for very long. So you have a stage, right? And when you have the stage, you have an opportunity. I suggest that you speak about something that you're really passionate about. Remember, if you're passionate about something, it shows and people get infected by that passion and are going to remember your presentation a lot more. We'll talk about this a little more later. Now, I've gone ahead and structured some tips for you for your Petra Kucha. I've gone ahead and structured them in three different sections on preparation, visual design and delivery. So let's first talk about preparation. A lot of us start slamming slides together as the first step in our preparation. I suggest that you do quite the opposite. I suggest that you stay away from your computer. It's because when you start slamming slides together, the things that you're supposed to be thinking about is how your layout is. What images are you going to use? What's the, what's the look and feel? And those are the wrong things to be thinking of first up when you should actually be thinking about the continuity and the flow of your presentation, which is extremely important when you're thinking about a presentation that's close to your heart. Uh, now, if you think of it, I really want that you pick up a presentation that's closer to your heart than to your head. If, you're, if you feel strongly about something over something that somebody told you to present, you're more likely to inspire people. Now, when you speak about something that you're very passionate about, you're likely to have a lot of things to say and you could perhaps talk until the cows come home. It's important that you pick one key message and then build your story around it build your presentation around it. If you have one key message, it's easier for people to remember at the end of six minutes and 40 seconds. Now, I spoke about story, and the reason I say this is because a lot of us have the tendency to dump a lot of facts. People don't remember facts. If you remember any of the Steve Jobs presentations, he would tell a story about his products. He wouldn't just go into a feature demonstration. So remember to tie it out and make reason for your audience. Uh, now, one of the things that helps me when I'm constructing a story is to interact with it. I really like scribbling my thoughts on index cards and post-its before I go into slides. Remember, once you've thought out your story well on paper, it's very easy to translate it onto slides because you know exactly the flow that you're going for. Speaking of slides, great visuals make you look really good. And when I say great visuals, I don't mean fancy stuff, I mean effective visuals. Now, in my case, I've used hand-drawn graphics, but I've tried my best to make them effective for the purpose. Now, when you start looking for visuals on the internet, you'll often use Google. And the kind of pictures that you'll get look like this. They're watermarked, they're clip arts, and they're ugly. Now, if you had to look for a picture of a witch, which I'm looking for in this case, then I suggest that you look for better sources. In particular, I really like the Creative Commons pool, and especially the Creative Commons pool on the site called Flickr. Now, if you search on Flickr for a picture of a witch, then what you'll get is this. Uh, this is a pretty edgy picture and looks far better than the other ones which we saw. But do remember that people put their pictures on Flickr expecting attribution. So in this case, I've attributed it to Pink Shabbat Photography, and make sure you give credit where it's due. Sometimes it's important that you click your own pictures. Everyone's got a camera these days, and there is often stories that you can tell only with your pictures. For example, we went out eating chicken wings, and my friend Cosman here found some of them really hot. Look at what it did to his lips. I couldn't tell you that story with a picture from the internet. So remember, sometimes a picture from a phone camera can be extremely useful. And remember, pictures can also be quite fun. Uh, if you had a picture of a farting elephant, in fact, that would be quite amusing. And the key here is that you 
interject your presentation with some humor. If people laugh through your presentation, they're more likely to remember it. Now that brings me to an interesting point about delivery. We often go out there trying to educate people. And I believe that our aim should be to entertain first and to educate next. Which is not to say that we don't need an educational message, which is only to say that if your presentation is fun, people are more likely to remember your message by the end of it than forget it. Now, you can't have fun if somebody is droning on a presentation. So don't try to say too much on a slide. Remember, it's only 20 seconds, and if you try to say too much, the slide's going to advance. So keep your messages crisp and try to flow through your slides in a relaxed fashion. You can do that only if you've done a fair amount of dress rehearsals. Now remember that's extremely important because the 20 seconds and 20 slides format actually moves at rapid pace. And you don't want to be speaking like an express train. You'd like to speak in a relaxed fashion. And rehearsals help in a big way. Now, despite all of the rehearsals you do, there will be screw-ups. Don't let these screw-ups scare you because everyone screws up. And guess what? Until you tell your audience, they're not going to know that you screwed up. So make sure that you cover up every now and then. I did a few cover-ups in this presentation. Did you notice them? All right. So the presentation format that's called Pecha Kucha is a great opportunity for you to bare your soul and be naked, in a metaphorical sense. It's an opportunity to be yourself and to have fun with something that you feel really, really strongly about. So I expect you to go out there and be extremely passionate and inspire the audience. I hope you have great fun with the Pachacucha format. All the best.